Howdy folks! Welcome to part 7 of my Electrical Edge tutorial series. Now last time in part 6, I showed you how to build a base in a house, and I promised you a tutorial on power plants. So, with a little bit of uh, waiting, here it is. Now to start off with, you'll notice in this time I have already pre-built a few things. Nothing here is really complicated to build, though. I mean, y'all can probably place down turbines, uh, stone heat furnaces, and active coolers in a configuration like this. None of them are even wired or anything. It's just it didn't feel like placing all of them and switching them all to external control and putting combustion chambers in them in a video. That's three minutes. You don't need to see me do. Anyways, right now we have this one little setup here that's powering the lights in this room. Now, what I'm going to do is use these two banks here, or four if they're stone heat furnaces, to power the active coolers on my main bank. This is part one in doing a setup like this, in that I really like to keep my cooling system for my main system on a separate power circuit than my main system. This is because if my main system has to suddenly provide a bunch of power, and I hook the main system back into the cooling system, then when the main system has to provide a bunch of power, it will cause a little bit of a drop on the network, which causes your cooling system to have a drop and to not perform as effectively. I've actually blown up one power plant by doing this and having way too much of a draw come on the, this here, which caused these guys to heat up incredibly hot in order to get my voltage up, but it wasn't enough in time to get the voltage up to turn the coolers on which caused these to overheat and explode. Now, normally you wouldn't have to do this if you have a properly balanced setup, do correct ramp up and ramp down procedures, but I'm guessing most of y'all aren't really keen on making giantly uh, regulated and correctly uh, balanced setups, so it's just easier to make it separate. Now the first thing you want to do is uh, get these other set plate things here hooked up. So obviously connect them with some cables and take a little uh, electrical probe here and hook them into the stone heat furnace. Now this one here is set to 200 to 20. If you know electrical probes it means that when the voltage is 200 it's going to make the stone heat furnace produce max heat and when the voltage gets up to 220 it'll shut it off. Pretty standard procedures. So 100% should be 200, 200% should be 220. Make sure to hit the validate button, otherwise sometimes it won't take it, and give it a cable. You'll note that uh, this furnace right here actually just kicked on and is currently heating up. So he's providing heat to this guy, which is providing power, which is causing this turbine here to turn. So let's just hook up the other one with a 200 and a 220, validate, give them a cable, and check them, and there we go. Note how his gauge is going down, though. This is because as these other turn er, turbines and stone heat furnaces come online, all four of them have to produce less power to keep it at the current consumption rate for the lights and the active coolers here. So, let's hook these guys up into the cooling system before we even do anything with the main grid. I've already put a couple of hubs here for cable management, so just put it like that, and put him over there, and voila! So now those guys will start cooling, and as you can see the uh, power consumption is about uh, 651 watts, but since each of these guys produces about 500, that's uh, plenty of power left over to power the lights and everything else successfully. And, as you can see, we're not even at uh, 50%. Nice and stable, plus a little extra power for something else. Maybe if you wanted to charge a battery for backup lighting or something. Anyways, the next step is to get the power out of our main bank. Now, if you'll notice, each bank here has 500 uh, watt turbines. So 500, 1000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. So each bank can produce 5,000 watts. Now that's the power capacity of a high voltage cable. 
thing is, is I put combustion chambers in there, so there's a pretty good chance that those can produce more than 5,000 watts of power. That means you're going to be stressing that high voltage cable. Additionally, if you're doing really, really high power systems like this, you're also going to just want to uh, basically put it up to the very high voltage cable. Even if it can handle it on the high voltage cable, you're still going to have more efficient power transfer with a higher voltage. So, I've already hooked up these transformers here. I like to keep with the little, uh, I guess, uh, method that the green side is lower voltage than the yellow side. You don't have to do that, you can do it whichever way you want, but it's easier for me to remember when I'm wiring things. So the green side starts at 200 volts, ramps it up to 800 volts. This guy is 800 volts and ramps it up to 3200 volts. So at the end of the day, I go from 1 or 5000 watts at 200 volts to 5000 watts at 3200 volts. Note that it won't overload any cables here though, because these turbines are connected directly into these transformers. This ignores the power limit for the cables. So even though you might be transmitting 5,000 watts on that cable, you don't need to worry about it because he's in a transformer. Note that this doesn't exempt it from voltage requirements, so if you make a mistake and like try and put a, I don't know, a 200 volt turbine into a 50 volt cable on a transformer, you're going to blow something up. Anyways, let's get this second bank wired here. So again, green side goes on that side. I'm going to put one cable on the green side, and then four cables on the yellow. And I'm going to need to get myself a coil. Where's that hiding? There we are. Put a core on. Same thing here. I like to keep the cables similar just to keep track. One on the green, four on the yellow, ferromagnetic core, and there you go. If you need a visual representation, just remember that the more cables on one side is the higher voltage side. So these two are ready to be plugged into a circuit. So let's get them connected. Again, these hubs here prevent the cables from connecting to other things. And there we are. Now we actually need to get the turbines here to turn on. So, again, like we did over there, we're going to use some voltage probes. Now these guys you have to make sure that the voltage is for the 3200 volt cable. So for the 200 volt cable I did 200 to 20. For the 3200 volt cable I'm doing 3200 3400. This is just for this side. So let's uh, hook up the other side. Again 3200 lower one goes in the top. 3400 lower one goes on the bottom, and add a very high voltage cable. Add a signal cable, and let's double check. That makes sense, it should be 100% because there's currently zero volts on this line, and that should be 100% because there's zero volts on this line. So, let's hook this line up. Note how the turbines are kicking on, just fine, temperature is starting to rise. 3.36 kilovolts, 3.37. And now the control gauge is at 16% because the voltage is where we want it to be. So, let's hook up the other bank. Again, temperature gauge is going to start to rise. The control gauge is going to stay low though because the voltage is pretty much where we want it to be. And now we have a uh, 32, or about 3400 uh, kilovolt line right now. Of course, we don't have anything to power it with, but in theory, this can provide at least 10 kilowatts of power. Now, I remember something that takes kilowatt, 10 kilowatts of power, and that's one of these sentry turrets at the max settings. So, I've hooked him up to a little transformer directly so he can accept uh, 10 kilowatts of power on an 800 uh, volt circuit. 
and put them over here to this junction right here. Now this switch here just controls the light on and off in that room, but this one controls whether or not that turret actually gets powered. So, connecting that up right here, and uh, flipping the switch, and he's activated. This little guy here just tells me how much power is going through here. When no power is going through here, it'll be at 0%, and when uh, 10 kilowatts of power is going through here, it'll be 100%. Now this little alarm here, considering that 100% is 10 kilowatts of power, will fire off, uh, not sure exactly when, but to probably around 8 kilowatts. If you wanted to be more precise, you could hook it up to a signal box. But right now we're just curious when this little line here reaches the max capacity of this power plant. This little VU meter here just tells us how much it is compared to that 10 kilowatts. So, the turret won't really do anything unless we give it something to shoot at. So why not get us some test subjects? Again, note how that power level spikes when the turret kicks on. So, if you want to watch this little thing here, note how we can easily make 10 kilowatts of power. And it also fluctuates pretty well. 10 kilowatts, round zero watts, no blowing up or nothing. It's actually pretty simple to regulate a power plant, and sometimes more so, and that all you have to do is just dump a bunch of power into one area. With home use, you have to be a little bit more careful, as the power usage is going to fluctuate a bit more, but with industrial use, you just produce all the power you want and uh, let it do what it's going to do. Most industrial setups are pretty much uh, regulated well enough to prevent overheating. But this one in particular, since it has cooling that is always constant and always at max force, makes it a lot less prone to overheating and blowing up with power changes. Note how the turbines cool down quickly, but when the power requirements go up, they also heat up decently fast. Also note how the power gauge shoots way up, but the temperature doesn't change too much. Mainly that's because the stone heat furnace is staying at about the same temp. The only thing it has to do is pump up a bunch of power when the system needs it. Well, that's about it for this tutorial, really. I mean, there's not too much to uh, power plants that you can't really do with a base. The key thing here is to remember to line all your turbines up and put them in a transformer in order to get optimal power transmission. Also remember that just because your turbines are rated for a certain rating doesn't mean you'll get it. With the two stone heat furnaces you'll usually get a bit over that rating, or combustion chamber upgrades, you'll get a little bit over that rating. With zero you'll get a little bit under that rating. Well that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed the series, and I probably won't be doing any more videos since uh, there ain't too much more to talk about. But uh, for all of you who have stuck with me through the beginning, for the final time, this is Don Bruce, signing off.